Welcome everyone to quick tech um, explanation video. Um, don't really want to stress too much the previous uh, destruction of Vodafone Stocks infrastructure, but related to that, and otherwise it will be technical today, we had this recurring internet short uh, outages there and they're breaking infrastructure and now two times nearly a year ago, eight months ago, so I, I had to drive back from France because this thing didn't recover and now we had this again. And as a case in point, please use more watchdog timers, right? I also don't understand how this ISPs, this is the problem is that it's of course cheap crap, right? Outsourced, overseas, cheap doxes, modems and stuff, or SS points. And what I really don't understand, as so often if you try to switch it off and on again, and the problem is this modem didn't recover from the net, net outage and it's not the second time. I really understand why does this bloody modem, I had to pay someone because I'm not in Berlin and um, so some of our employees had to go there and also I was begging so Vodafone also told me hey we can access this modem also their telephone support told me now it's a whole outage. On Twitter they told me no 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 this modem is online. She's like yeah but I can't access it. I was begging them on Twitter can you please reset this box and somehow this, and they said, yeah, you can do it yourself. I was like, yeah, thank you very much. We can do it yourself if someone would be in the office. But anyway, so this kind of stuff wouldn't happen. And it really surprises me. That, or it does not really surprise me. But since 2006 or so, I actually should look up the exact date. My company, XR Code, right? We, we actually tried since then embedded news, like make stuff work more better <clears throat> every day, better software. And watchdog timers are one of those things that are, in my opinion, really underused, especially of, sure, this is cheap crap, but maybe this ISP modems and routers shouldn't be such cheap crap, right? Maybe they should spend an euro or five dollars more and not have this random buggy stuff. Plus, of course, outdated Linux kernel, even at ASUS, uh, previous videos, right, remote code execution management stuff. So what does it do? So the stuff fails and sure, stuff can fail. Also, you could argue that stuff always needs to work, like stuff needs to be bug free, but let's be real realistic, right? Stuff will not be bug free, um, especially on stuff like, where do we are? It's not in here. Um, like a Mars rover or a space rocket, right? Or your, your car. And in such things, um, space rockets, rovers, satellites, car, MCUs, of course, watchdog timers are used and they should be used more, in my opinion. So what are they? They are um, some hardware secretary to uh, automatically reset a system like your car's engine or actually when, while I was driving, once my navigation system actually rebooted a BMW Mini thing, I think I saw this two times rebooting while I was driving. A little bit scary, right? But it's only the navigation. So. This is some reset circuitry that can be quite directly connected to the reset signal. And this timer, um, when used, is usually set up to like, let's say, one second, uh, counting down, for example. And then if the timer reaches zero or the other way around, counting from zero doesn't matter, of course, which direction is counting. It, of course, depends on the manufacturer. Some prefer it counting up, some counting down. Um, then if the this timer time is reached, resetting the system, uh, the system, for example, one of those pins directly going to the reset um, of the processor. Complex systems could even have multiple watchdog timers, um, for example, for modem broadbands on, you probably have seen even your uh, iPhone, iOS or Android uh, broadband uh, at times restarting um, due to bugs and, and crashes and stuff. And this can be rather rather complex. There are different forms. So the simplest form is simply counting down. And even I think even some PCs have watchdog timers. I, I think even the OCO01, like ALI, not sure if all South bridges and um, chips that have a watchdog timer. I, I think I've seen this in the ALI um, of the OCO, or I also think uh, even the Sun Ultra 5 had a watchdog timer, even with a Linux driver. And this can be made more complex. For example, if you have a Mars rover or space rocket, you could uh, configure a more advanced, uh, also yeah, advanced, <laughs> not one, one or two uh, hardware registers more to have also additional not to be 
um, triggered watchdog time so that instead of having a watchdog timer that can be reset at any time, let's say you configure this for one second and when your system still works, um, like your Linux kernel or your network traffic, it would reset this timer um, and not reset the system, basically preventing the watchdog from kicking in and, and resetting the system. And it might be desirable to test the correct function of a system, like your space rocket or your Mars rover, um, not to kick in so early, right? So, for example, if your program counter jumps randomly due to space radiation or heat or cold or stuff, um, to have a smaller window and such double or triple your reliability um, by also treating this, for example, either as no operation, which doesn't increase reliability that much, but um, I think, because they, I think they even write here, um, kicks occurring outside of this window. With kicks, I mean like kicking this timer, aka resetting this timer. I'm not the greatest fan of this kick word, but I'm also kicking watchdogs and doesn't sound the most pleasant. And anyway, um, outside this window has either no effect or maybe treat it as additional faults. So if you treat this as additional faults, I, I think this not treating this as an action, um, as a reset action, not the biggest win, um, but certainly having a narrower window with, with surrounding um, not allowed times can double or triple your reliability by um, assuring that your MCU, your process, not like executing random stuff um, due to space radiation or bugs and um, accidentally keeps resetting this timer when in fact it's already not functioning properly anymore. Some picks have a dedicated instructions. Usually this is some add-on hardware, sync your PC Uncore uh, chipset um, or simply really discrete integrated circuits, time timer circuits that are connected with a classic or memory mapped I.O. ports. And um, in case of this cheap S modem router hardware, if implemented, for example, instead of re-waiting, um, telling us on the telephone it's offline when also yeah two times support right it's offline no no it's not offline it's like yeah what the heck now and if implemented properly this could actually especially for this business contracts sure at home you could always have you try to switch it off and on again but in our case and these days in time with home office and stuff certainly would be nice imagine if everything and this is a recurring theme right if everything would not be so cheap so so dirt cheap and, and lowest, lowest value working have you tried to switch it off and on again. But imagine if everything would be just like 10, 20, like a little bit more of it, a little bit more sophisticated, engineered. And um, I would actually, yeah, previous times, like decades ago, stuff was certainly not as cheap down versions of everything and um, a little bit more tech taken care of and tested. The problem is also that nowadays they source this from no name-ish suppliers and stick their sticker on it. And the, then the stuff is also never fixed, right? This bugs, this stuff is buggy and remains buggy for years. There is often um, either no leverage or no interest of improving devices instead of telling the manufacturers and firmware, also probably not direct firmware access, so they probably always need to go to the overseas no name company and tell them to fix something and then they never fix something or they, the no-name company just pretends they have fixed something. That is certainly one thing that Apple is a little bit better in. Of Sure, they have hashtag peak bugs, but um, yes, they also don't fix all peak bugs at Apple, but at least to some degree, especially if it has a lot of media attention, they eventually fix some stuff. And yeah, I wish this yeah common sense and common knowledge and uh, Theoretically, you could even use it on your server, on your Intel or AMD server. Again, some have watchdogs. And on the Linux side, how this works, um, if you have your own microprocessor, microcontroller thing, you can, of course, just program this directly with whatever bus this is attached with. On Linux, there are watchdog drivers, of course. And um, I think they have this written here somewhere. And yes, this is just some, obviously, uh, wiki content here. I just don't have time to re, uh, redraw all the stuff again myself. But on Linux, for example, there are drivers that expose this usually as dev watchdog something. Um, and then you can from userland, for example, from userland, 
uh, configure this and trigger this, for example, to have uh, user space programs um, either custom made or um, in the cheapest form of a cron job or a systemd uh, event to write into this with a zero or one or something to reset this in the simplest form uh, unless of course you have only kernel services like many of those network appliances that um, also recurring criticism of having mon monolithic single address space kernel having, having everything in your network stack IPv4, IPv6, all the complexities, routing and firewalling, everything in the kernel, what could possibly go wrong. <clears throat> and yeah, maybe you actually would want to set up some kind of watchdog in, in your kernel to also, uh, for example, have network traffic of having this timer reset. And yes, it's not super trivial. Um, for example, you could still have some traffic, um, but in, in our case, zero traffic, like zero TCP IP, like server side visible TCP IP packets um, arrived or were sent. And um, so in this particular case, if I complain about this kind of router and modem appliances, um, of course, a little bit special care needs to be done and, and certainly some testing for that to work reliable. But the irony is they often reset this stupid piece of cheap plastic stuff at nights when we don't want it, right? With, this is a thing of you don't own this, they do what they want, they update the firmware every other week. So we already, the irony is we have already some downtime like every day at random because this bloody thing resets. But if you need it to reset because you are not there and there was a network outage and doesn't resynchronize and it, it thinks it has internet. And that's also the thing, right? The internet um, LED when, um, our, our um, Exacode uh, fellow um, checked this in the office, so the internet light was on, so it can't, you can't do it as easy as, hey, if this device thinks it has internet because this internet LED was blue, whitish or something, so you can't directly connect off the state of it has internet to the watchdog timer you say to make this really reliable. In this case, there wouldn't need to be some engineering and testing to really wires is a little bit sophisticated of what kind of network packets. Yeah, on Twitter they told me they have allegedly remote access. I'm not sure with this kind of stuff, right? I'm not sure if they plain out lie to me because I have it hard to imagine that they have remote management access to this router. And A, if this thing is connected, I would think it goes through the same kind of TCP IP stack probably. So if our server gets zero packets, why should their remote access work? Plus, if this works previously on phone, I know they can reset this, they can restart this remotely because they have done while I was sitting there. Ironically, when I was sitting in the office, they remotely on the telephone reset the thing and, and I saw the thing rebooting. And when you need it, when you are not in the office, when you are hundreds of kilometers away and you are begging them, please reset this piece of shit. They, no, they, they, then they don't do it. You can do it yourself. Like, so to me, it's a little bit fishy of do they really tra tell the truth that they have access. But in either case, um, it would need, if it has management TCP IP traffic going on, then it would need to be combined of real traffic, um, not like some management stuff that may or may not work or some whatever configuration state got corrupt there or, or out of sync or whatever. So yeah, having a simple watchdog is not enough. It needs to be a little bit sophisticatedly engineered for that particular purpose. And they also, uh, as you've seen on the screen here, you can also have multi-stage um, watchdogs of not only one, but also additional hardware components, sync satellites, sync space rocket, or moon or Mars rover and stuff, so that you not have only your primary computer, but also additional hardware components that need to work, so that not only the main computer hardware watchdog, um, but also additional surrounding, like communication uplink um, there to Earth, or <clears throat> up and downlink to Earth, or other components, um, cooling system, um, and, and, and other engine controls and stuff, so that if there is a fault of any of those, as uh, that could potentially also 
uh, trigger a reset of the system to hopefully recover, especially in space, right? Anyway, I hope you found this interesting, um, just additional thoughts of this. And I really wonder, right, why does a small little YouTuber like me remind, need to remind big companies um, it, because it's also with each of those routers, even DSL previously, um, leave in the comments below who of you has had such is issues or of have you tried to switch it off and on again, uh, fix some internet connectivity. And this of course goes on uh, to other components, um, network appliances, uh, yeah, Hool servers and stuff. Anyway, use this hardware, right? Uh, check your, if you're designing systems, check your, yeah, like properly manage, make a, project management, roadmap and stuff, and what you want for additional reliability and um, autonomous operation and check your data sheet, what actually you have in there. Maybe your stuff already has that and you can make use of such components in the future or use additional mm, dedicated integrated circuits. Anyway, hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I hope to see you soon for all the next more technical updates to come.